welcome. This is Brian Arnold. We are another episode of the Black Wealth Experience podcast. And I have some special guests today. And I have Saneri uh, and Philip that are from uh, Vector Bank. And so uh, they will be talking to us about some amazing programs that they have. I uh, just wanted a quick reminder before we jump into their uh, what they have for us today is uh, we're having a Black Wealth Housing Summit on June 19th. Uh, it is from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, it is at Cross Purpose, which is on the corner of Martin Luther King Boulevard and Colorado Boulevard. Uh, it is There's an AME church on the corner and they share the parking lot with there. So we're hoping that you can make it. We want to feed you dinner. Uh, we want to share with you some really cool principles. We want to talk about, uh, you know, make sure that you have a real estate agent that you can interact with, a loan officer that you can interact with, uh, you know, credit repair if you're needing credit repair, uh, insurance folks that you can interact, a financial planner, because what we want to do is make sure you have a roadmap that we can get you into housing because, you know, the, the, the theme of this is whose mortgage are you paying? Uh, and hopefully you're paying your own. I go into apartment complexes all the time and I see uh, folks and I talk to people and they say they didn't know that they could own a home. They say, I thought I had to have 20% down. And when they think about prices here in the Metro Denver area, you know, I don't have $80,000 to put down on a house. And so that is one of those myths that we want to debunk. That's one of those things where we want to make sure that you have the ability. I say this a lot. If you're paying $2,000 a month, which a lot of you are here in the Denver Metro area for rent, uh, and you do that for 12 months, that means you've paid $24,000 in one year. If you, if you stay at that place for a whole 10 years, now you've given that landlord $240,000. And in most cases, it's a, if it's an apartment, you've actually paid for that unit. And then they're going to continue to rent it out. And if you want to go to 20 years, you've double paid uh, for that unit. Uh, and that's just one unit in that complex. And so we want you to be able to realize the home ownership. Because when we talk about generational wealth or we talk about personal wealth, what we're saying is the, that the stair steps to do that or the beginnings of that are through home ownership. That is the fastest way uh, for 99% of us, because obviously there's some folks that win the lottery or something that you say that's the fastest way to wealth if you just did it one time. Uh, but if you really want to realize how equity works and, and you know how long you're going to work in a job and all that kind of stuff, the fastest way for personal wealth and generational wealth is through home ownership. And so we want to talk about that today. We want to talk about it tomorrow. We want to continue talking about it. If you're hearing this and the Wealth Summit is already over, we still want you to go to the website, which is the blackwealthexperience.org. We want you to say, you know, to, to sign up or RSV, let us know so that we can help you because that is our goal. So today, a special guest, we have Victor Bank here and we have Sanari and Philip, who are our employees at the bank, uh, but they are in charge of some special programs uh, that actually will help people in our community. Uh, they are a community-based bank. They want to make sure that they're helping people. Uh, they do some stuff that other banks and some of those big banks uh, can't do. You know, I know we've talked to like First Bank and they came on, or we talked to U.S. Bank, which are these big banks, but there's some things that they can't do in every community uh, because they're so large, because they're in all these communities. But Vectra has some really unique things. And so, uh, scenario, Philip, whichever one wants to take it, how do folks get a hold of you? Because I want them to make sure they know how to do that before we start talking about the programs. Then let's talk about, you know, what are some of the things that you do about in the community? Uh, and then we'll move on from there into some of the programs. So how, how can folks get a hold of you if they were to need to get a hold of you right after the end of this uh, uh, podcast. So I'll, uh, I'll take that, uh, you know, all credit goes to Sonari on this one. She is uh, an amazing force in our community. Um, and I think she sent you a flyer uh, so we can share that's got all of her contact information on there. Um, uh, have her email, uh, her cell phone number. Um, I think it's probably even got her work address if you want to go and take a little visit to the office. Um, so uh, Sonari, I'll let you shoot those numbers just uh, to everyone, but also want to share them, you know, slowly right now so people can write them down. Sure, thank you, Bob. Our phone number is 626-476-8943. They can office line at 0 All right. 
Perfect. Well, 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 thank you. We'll put that flyer. It'll be in the chat here uh, at this podcast. So you'll be able to go there. So if you didn't get it or, you know, we're going to make sure you have the access to being able to to contact them. So tell us a little bit about, you know, Vector Bank and why you guys got into this business. And, you know, then we'll jump into some programs. But just, you know, how, how are you helping the community? So I'll start with, uh, you know, I've been in this business longer than I can remember, uh, you know, through all the ups and the downs. And um, I started in, in banking and then got into mortgages and got, got back into banking. And um, I've been at Vectra here for about five and a half years. Uh, I, uh, I helped to uh, run the run the state from a mortgage standpoint. Uh, and this this is one of the best programs I've ever seen uh, from a usage standpoint. Um, the the high level on it is it's three percent down um not including um other payment assistance that's that's possible um there's no mortgage insurance it's a little bit less than you know normal pricing as far as the rates are concerned um and it's tailored specifically to first-time home buyers um okay. you know if to your point when you said you know, you've got four hundred thousand dollar homes as far as the median income, you know, median price is concerned, and that's that's a real that's a real big number. And mm -hmm. if you've got mortgage insurance, if you don't have twenty percent to put down, um, that makes that payment, you know, sometimes further out of reach for people. So not having mortgage insurance on this is, you know, one of the biggest value adds that there is. Uh, it's just a phenomenal program. We have chosen to be a part of the community and and you know whereas some other larger banks will just um you know purchase these loans to put in their portfolios we want to be out originating these loans we want to be out helping get people in their homes because again exactly as you said wealth and generational wealth starts at home ownership um you know you you said hey there's two thousand dollars a month that you're that you're throwing away you know that's before taxes you know you got to earn that and then pay taxes to the $2,000. So that wow. number is higher, you know, in an overall earning standpoint, which makes it even more impactful. Um, you know, Sonari can share about some of the things that she does in the community. She's she's out there constantly, you know, had the opportunity to meet you on a uh, on a on an evening, on a weekend evening, which was really, really, you know, great and, you know, filled, filled my heart with what you guys are doing. Gotcha. But yeah, before we have Sonari come on, just, just quickly, because you, you brought up something that is huge, and it's that this thing called mortgage insurance. And I think a lot of people who are exploring buying a house don't understand how that plays into. So maybe you can just kind of talk about mortgage insurance and why it's why it's such a great program not to have it. <laughs> Completely. That's, yeah, again, this is near and dear to my heart. I did the first loan of this of this program when we piloted it. I think five years ago. Um, so mortgage insurance, anytime you put less than 20% down, as far as your mortgage is concerned, uh, you've got to pay something called mortgage insurance. That can either be a monthly mortgage insurance uh, where you're paying you know, mm -hmm. on a monthly basis, there's X number of dollars. And that is based on both the, the value of the loan to the value of the house. So if mm -hmm. you're at 81% of the loan to the value of the house, it's one. And then it's at 85 and then in 5% increments, it goes higher and higher and higher. So a lot of people will also see like an FHA loan, which has a, two components to mortgage insurance. One of them is a monthly mortgage insurance. And then the other one is an upfront MIP, uh, mortgage insurance premium. Um, and that is a percentage of, of the loan amount on top of it. So again, the value add for this, um, having no monthly mortgage insurance is that your, your payment gets stretched huge um and your savings is you know that you realize over the course of of the loan i mean it adds up you know you've got to pay mortgage insurance in on other loans until you get to you know 20 percent equity in the property but that's based on when you bought the house not mm -hmm. based on today's value so if you buy a house for two hundred thousand dollars and you know you put 4% down, 5% down, and you're paying mortgage insurance. And three years later, four years later, you know, that is now $300,000, 350, whatever, you don't get that benefit. 
everything is calculated, you know, how, when you bought it. So unless you were to refinance with a new appraisal, it's going to stay on there for a long time. And with FHA, it's going to stay on there really forever unless you put a big chunk down too. So again, the, the compounding factor of not having this component is, is just, it's a game changer. Oh, wow. Yeah. It just, you know, this is where I, you know, obviously I know the answer, but I want you to answer it. So don't I need mortgage insurance in case something happens to my house and it needs to get fixed? <laughs> That's great. Because, uh, you know, mortgage insurance is different than homeowner's insurance. There we go. So mortgage insurance is what is you're, you're paying a, an actual insurance premium so that if something happens and you, the house, you got to give the house back, you know, uh, the bank is made whole. Whomever it is, is made whole, right? Homeowner's insurance, that's what happens if you get rain, yeah. like we have been getting <laughs> for the past four weeks uh, yeah. or hail or something like that. So yeah, good point. Those are two different components. Yeah, and, and what's really kind of unique and the why I love that you guys have this is when, when you think about mortgage insurance, you're paying the premium for the bank. It has no benefit to you as a consumer at all. It's, it's the bank's hedge that if you end up foreclosing or you can't afford the house, that the bank gets their money back. And so yeah. you're paying that premium for the bank. And that's what all mortgage insurance really does. So thank you for explaining that. That's that's the educational component today. Uh, so so, yeah. right, so give us you know your your take and why you're here and what you're doing in the community because this is the exciting part the the education stuff yeah you know, we need to know that stuff but this is the really cool part thank you brian i appreciate you having us on today um i've been with the bank for over five years now i um, been in the business for over 10 and i am so proud to be a part of vectra bank we truly give back to our community through lending through home ownership um, with our CRA program, our Community Reinvestment Act program. We assist with closing costs. Um, our rates are much lower. We help buy down rates. Um, we help with down payment and mortgage insurance. It's a game changer. Families are able to buy a bigger home, um, able to save money, help them out during the home purchase transaction. And after they purchase the home, the money that they saved has helped them um, have a few months of reserves. Such a game changer. Um, I've been working um, many communities and it has been life changing because they have become my family as well. I still keep in touch with them. They tell me without the CRA program, they would have to purchase the home. So I appreciate the partnership, Mr. Brian, anything I can do to assist and looking forward to the events on Monday. Oh, good. We're, we're excited to have you. So this, when you say CRA, you're talking about the Community Retirement uh, Act, right? That's that's the name of your program. Uh, and it's specifically for, well, it, it targets to first time home buyers uh, and it allows them to be able to come in. What are some of the, like, I, I'm brand new. I, I don't know anything about you know, buying a home other than uh, I saw this podcast and Brian just said, you can have a home. And so I come in there. What are some things that they need to bring to you or things that they need to come in with, uh, you know, before you, you can even start the process? Um, you know, because I know for some people it's going to take, you know, they're ready right now. Some people might take six months. Some people might take a year. But what are some of those things that are needed uh, for somebody who's looking to come in and say, uh, this is what, what I want to do? With a investment program, uh, educate my clients, show them the flyer, the rundown, a summary of our program, and about their credit, their finance, um, what they would like to buy. Get to know them before they fill out the application. And if they need assistance with credit, we work with Hope, which is a nonprofit um, that credit repair. Um, we sit down, fill out the application, go over their finances, look at their credit. Um, we will partner up uh, with any real estate agents that they want to work with. So we look at a target map um, to see where they would like to live. Some areas have income restrictions. Some areas do not. Um, we look at their family size. So I truly try to dig deep um, with their financial 
and um, how much they can qualify for fitting them into the box with Community Reinvestment Act program. Okay. You're breaking up a little bit, but at the same time, I think we got the, you know, all the things that, that you're able to do. Um, where are, are we everywhere in the Denver metro area? Are we, you know, if I got an uncle or an aunt that lives, you know, somewhere outside of, you know, the Denver metro area, <laughs> what do I do? How, you know, or is it this is like, hey, you got to move to Denver if you're going to if you're going to get this this loan. How does that work? <laughs> the community program is for the whole state of Colorado. OK. Yes. All right. Yep. And let me jump in here. Um, so I'll see if I can get. Let me share my screen for a second. Absolutely. So here's what's kind of the, the, the best way to use this program. And this is just Denver Metro uh, mm -hmm. as far as kind of the area. Um, the way it works with this program is that if you're in the yellow or the orange areas, there are no income restrictions. So these ones are in what are known as lower moderate census mm -hmm. tracts. And the, the great part about that is that you don't have to worry about having an income restriction. If you are in what are known as a middle or an upper census tract, whereas you know the, the greens and kind of the, I guess, light greens, mm -hmm. maybe light blue, um, they're, they're income restrictions. So it's harder to, to use from a program standpoint because of the fact that to your point, uh, with the medium price being so expensive, uh, if you were in a middle or, or a high census tract, the program starts capping you at the HUD income limits. And uh, to just give you an example, you know, for a person of, of four, your, your median income limit, you know, is, is in the 60,000 kind of dollar range. It's very hard to qualify. Mm -hmm. just because of the, the home prices are, are so expensive. So if you focus on these other areas um, where, you know, it's the yellow and the orange, you don't have to worry about the income. And again, we can, you can expand this to the whole of Colorado as well. So not every area. So it's really important to start with Sonari, get with her, get with your agent. And then there's another site that, that we use, which is it's referred to as a geocoder site. Um, and what happens is, is you can plug an address in here and it'll tell you, hey, right here where this little red dot is, that's in a census tract that is moderate. Okay. Great. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the income. You can be two people, you know, earning 40 or $50,000 each and you're okay. So it's also, it's about how you use the program to the, to the best, mm -hmm. um, the best way to get people into, uh, into the homes that are in these areas. And again, that's where it all starts. It all starts with getting in contact, you know, knowing how to use the program to your benefit, because it's such an amazing, it's such an amazing program that, you know, it's, it's just the best. And when you're speaking with other people, um, let's say you're speaking with a mortgage broker mm -hmm. or um, uh, an independent mortgage uh, banker, you know, and they're a little bit different. So, they don't have access to these programs because they're not a Fannie Mae program. They're not a Freddie Mac program. They're a program that we are choosing to do to, you know, help bolster the community and bolster home ownership and just make it, you know, more affordable for people to get into homes. Absolutely. And I, I love how you're saying that because you guys have created a niche program uh, for a lot of, you know, folks that are really trying to get going. And I, and I tell people this all the time is the first house you move into is not necessarily your forever home. This is a stepping stone to be able yeah. to move up to. So we need to get you in a home first because your apartment, you're paying hundred percent interest, you know? And so the, you know, whatever the interest rate is right now, I, I'm not as worried about that. I'm more worried about you getting into a home you know, and then we figure out from there, what's the next stepping stone. So if you're looking at those green areas and you go and you type it in and you're going, wait a minute, this house is $700,000 and I don't have enough money to pay 700. No, you don't need to move into that house right now. That mm -hmm. house can be no. a stepping stone as you go out. And and I'm a lender. So, I, you know, I, I want you to, you know, if I can, I want to do a loan for you. Right. But if I come across this 
and I go, okay, you come to me and you say, uh, I need to get into a home. And I look through my, you know, programs that I have that I can offer you. And I go, wait a minute, based on your situation, this isn't the right program. I'm 100% going to refer you over to Vectra. I can still work with you and be your lender on the second home or the third home, you know, and that relationship's going on, but they have such an amazing program. If I'm not able to provide that same exact, you know, benefit program that can get you into a home, then I'm, I'm jumping over there. You know, I specialize in reverse mortgages. Most likely your first home is not going to be a reverse mortgage. You know, if it is, then, then we got another thing and, and Vectra is not the right place. But if I can get you in, I know you have moms, you have dads, you know, maybe, you know, that 3% down is something that uh, is, is difficult, that you don't really have that. And, and I'm not sure if your program allows a gift for that 3% down, but if you, if it, you guys are shaking your head. So maybe yep. grandma has the ability with equity in her own for reverse mortgage to help you with that 3%. So even if that's something that's scary to you, let's both talk. I'll get the 3%, help you get the 3% from grandma. And then we uh, go to, you know, Vector and say, okay, this is the program that is right for you. It's getting in, you into a home. Uh, so yeah, that part is amazing. Go ahead, go ahead and make some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the the gift that's that's perfect to touch on because yeah, hundred um, percent, you know, we see a lot of people getting, you know, gifts from family members. And, you know, when we saw you this weekend, you know, you shared a great story where you were able to have, you know, a matriarch pull money out and give that towards down payment to, you know, the grandkids and put them on their way to home ownership. Um, I mean, again, I'm such a proponent of home ownership because, you know, you've seen appreciation go up over the last five years, six years. I mean, in Denver, 10 years, it seems. Um, you know, imagine if you had bought the, 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 $150,000 house then you'd be mm -hmm. sitting on probably $200,000 worth of equity or something like that. Um, you know, versus again, paying, paying rent. Um, and it's, yeah, it, it's such a, it's such an amazing thing to be able to change people's lives with this. And that's why we do it, you know, to your, to your point, yeah, I think we try to find out whatever is best for people, you, us work together, um, no matter, who's doing it, you know, we're here to help. Yeah. And you start thinking, you know, when I think about home ownership, and this is how I look at it and I have eight children and 13 grandkids. And I think of, you know, college education and 529 plans and, uh, you know, I have a PhD. And so education is important. Um, it's very important in our family. It's very important for my kids. But when I think about where I want to spend my dollars, I, if I had a choice between getting one of my kids into a home at 23 or paying for their college education or, or helping with the college education, most likely I'm going to pick the home ownership. And the reason is because it starts them out on a trajectory. There's all kind of methods and ways to go to school. There's all kind of grants. There's all kind of scholarships. There's all kind of ways to go to, to college. And I'm not saying I, college is very important in education because it, it, it determines your potential for earning. But if you could do both, if you could start that, because there's so many people that don't end up with the scholarships or don't end up with parents that pay for the whole amount or pay for something. And then that 24 years old and they have, you know, $100,000 in debt or $200,000 in debt, trying to figure out how am I going to pay for this, then home ownership starts 15 years later and they lose all of this. And so if there's an ability to get somebody into a home, you know, and there's even ways that, you know, the home can help pay for some of the college expenses and stuff. And so as that's a thought, I know there's legislation now that is being proposed to say, you know, we have 529 plans for college. Why don't we have you know, home ownership plans where parents can save up to help out with these things like down payments and that stuff, you know, so we don't start off our world in renting. And so that's just a thought, um, you know, that I just threw out there right now because we kind of started talking about this thing called down payments. Are there any other things that are really special to this program that maybe set you apart from some of the other down payment assistance programs that are out there? I would like that we go a percent combined loan to value. If some down are in need of the down payment assistance. We do um, partner up with CHAC and 
to offer around $15,000 to assist with the 3% down and closing costs as well. Yeah. All right, so when you save 105, when you say 105%, you know, you go, well, there's only 100% of the price, right? So that extra 5% is those costs that it costs to do business in a transaction, right? Those things called closing costs uh, that you can continue to go up to. So you can combine the check funds on a down payment assistant if somebody didn't get it. If you had a gift, you wouldn't need that. But you can also use some of those funds for down payment assistance as well, right? So that you are closing costs, I guess is what I'm saying, so that you end up into the house. What is like the least amount of money that somebody had to come in with in order to get a home? Like their own personal money that you can think of? A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Okay. So let me just recap what you just said. You said that a person can come to you. If they have a thousand dollars now this is not everybody but if they qualify for the right things they could have a thousand dollars and they can own a home yeah. and so i want to compare that to an apartment right because we think about apartments i i don't think even when 30 years ago when i was trying to get into an apartment i i could get into an apartment for a thousand dollars and then have to pay the landlord for the next three or four years five years ten years whatever it is so I can own a house. I'm, I just, I'm just recapping. I own a house for a thousand dollars. I can walk into a, a property and own a house and start this thing called home ownership. Yes, that is correct. Um, wow. And so Brian, it would be great to talk about the, uh, you know, the interest. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Please, please explain how the interest yeah, works. The, stuff, you know, you're great. you're paying. You know, your your mortgage is comprised. Your mortgage payment, rather, is comprised of your principal, your interest, your taxes, your insurance, um, and you know maybe an HOA. Mm -hmm. And on your taxes, you get to write off a certain amount of the interest that you pay on your mortgage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to use a round number. If you if you're paying two thousand dollars in your mortgage and fifteen hundred of that because they're front end loaded at the beginning is interest you're going to get to write some of that off and that so it's it's advantageous again from the wealth building standpoint when you're paying rent you're missing out on one the equity that you're building because a portion of your payment goes to the equity mm -hmm. every month so you're building up a little bit of equity every time but also you get to write off that interest whereas the other person that's writing it off if you're not doing it and you're paying rent somebody else landlord Landlord's doing it. Yes. Yep. And you don't get to in your apartment, you don't get to go do your taxes at the end of the year and go, I, I just paid this landlord all this money. How much do I get back in my taxes for writing, writing out? Right. Right? You don't get any of that back at all. I mean, it's just, it, it is so amazing uh, when you think of Denver metro area and how many apartment complexes are being built right now. Yeah, right. And being built because they know somebody it doesn't understand some of these things. Somebody that hasn't been to Vector Bank to sit down and say, so they're willing to go put, you know, sometimes three times the rent. So they come up with 6,000, you know, if it's 2,000 a month, they have $6,000 that they're putting towards the rent. 2,000 goes to the first month. The other is part of a deposit and the other is everything else. And then they may, may never even see that money again. And they get to live in this apartment where I guess the, the, a lured portion or the dangling stars is if my water heater goes out and the landlord fixes it, you know, instead of me having to fix it, I get that question all the time. But just to think of what they're losing out on a, on a monthly basis with interest and with uh, being able to deduct that and, and being able to just, you know, qualify in these, in this home ownership things, there's all kind of ways that we can get the water heater paid for. You know, that. Exactly. You're paying for it in the rent. Believe me, I promise you the landlord is is put the price point where if your water heater goes out, he can replace it with what you're paying him in rent. Got and, you. And, you know, another point that you brought up earlier was the homeowner's insurance. Part mm -hmm. of what you're paying, again, to go back to kind of homeownership 101, if if you get a big hailstorm that comes in, your, your, your payment comprised of your taxes, your insurance, your principal and interest, that insurance in there. That's mm -hmm. going to, you know, cover the damages and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, homeownership is I think is just vital. And mm -hmm. the reason why they're building so many of the apartments is because, you know, the, the home prices are going up so high. So back to circle back to your point, 
first home. No one ever that you know got their first home probably stayed there for the entirety of their lives. Absolutely. So it doesn't have to be the four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar you know splash house prices that you hear about everything. Just get into a home. Just take that step. Yeah, I hear you. And that's that's one of those other things that that I think in people's minds when you know you show them like a good faith estimate or something and it shows them this is your interest rate and this is your payment and how much you're going to pay, it shows how much you're going to pay over 30 years. You know, but the reality is is just what you said. I'm still looking. I mean, I found a few of my reverse mortgage customers who actually had one loan for 30 years, but that's so far and few between. You know, if, if I have a hundred people that I'm doing a loan with, there might be one person that had a loan for 30 years, yep. the same loan that life, they started out with happens. for 30 years. If yeah. even one, <laughs> that would happen. So you can't think through the process of I'm gonna, you know, oh, I gotta pay all this money when they're when you're freaking out about what's the rate that I need to get in. Get in, get into a place uh, like the person we talked to yesterday. Uh, they bought their house, and within one year, they was a brand new couple. Didn't even believe they could buy a house the year before they buy a house and with one in within one year that house they bought is now a rental and they bought another home a, a brand new a new build within a year and they have two homes and income coming in from it that's the mindset and the dream set that vetra can actually allow you to to have because mm -hmm. you know for you know she said the lowest is a thousand dollars and it might be five or six thousand dollars for you to get into a home you know just depending on your qualification but to think that that's possible and to know that you can do this and that there are community partners uh, that are there to be able to do that. So one more time, I want you guys, you can, we're kind of running out of time now, but one more time on just how to get in contact with you, uh, what to bring to the table, you know, if it's just show up and start talking or it's, you know, bring some stuff in when we come, but just kind of give everybody the, the feel for what is needed when uh, and how to get a hold of you, and then what to what to call you when they come in. Yeah, so Sonari, uh, you know, can share her information again. All uh, all contacts mm -hmm. you go to Sonari. She is uh, the expert on this, and uh, such a such a great resource. Um, if you can share that again, that would be great, uh, and we'll have her repeat it. But the it can be a conversation. Uh, it can be, you know, bring in your taxes, your pay stubs, your bank statements. If you want to, you know, start with everything, you know, bring it all in. Everything's going to start with, you know, sitting down and doing an application so we can take a look at, you know, credit and see where we are as far as that's concerned. So, um, you know, it's really, if it's, if it's an uncomfortable thing, you don't want to bring everything to the table because you're not sure. Cool. Let's start with the conversation. Doesn't, you know, it can be the first conversation that you have. And then it can turn into something you can, you know, kind of chew on it and then come back and, you know, you'll have your aha moment and uh, then, you know, get started in earnest. Um, or, you know, we've got some people that are like, great, here's every piece of information that I have. Mm -hmm. You know, tell me, tell me what I can do. Uh, you know, and, and Sonari can share probably a couple of experiences as well um, that, you know, kind of more, more personalize what she does on a daily basis. All right. Well, thank you. And just, you know, as I'm going through this, you know, it's not just for first time home buyers. And, you know, we, we look at minimum FICO score at 620. If you don't have a 620, uh, still come to the event that we're doing on Monday, our June 19th uh, from 530, 730, because we're going to have credit folks there that can show you what you need to do to get up to uh, that that FICO score. Uh, and we want to work with you over a plan. Like I said, for some of you, we know it's going to take a little bit. The, you know, assisting with closing costs, you know, uh, 15 and 30 year fixed rates. If you need, you know, that that's where we need to be, you know, 3% down, get funds. Okay. All these things that they put together because they, they understand that they want you in a home. And some, you know, some people ask me sometimes, well, why would a bank do this? Well, they know it's a secure, the, the chance of you, you know, buying a house and picking it up and taking it with you, you know, like a car where you, you can hide it is very slim. So they know they can get you into the house. Plus, they also know, and this is if, if they do a really good job of helping you get into a home, hopefully you'll be a client of theirs for the rest of your life. 
And there's other products and services that are available that they give that that continue to help the community that help that bank be vibrant and help that bank be a community bank. And so uh, you want to take advantage of this instead of renting. Whose mortgage are you paying? All right. Did you guys have any other closing thoughts that you wanted to to share with anybody um, before we we wrap this up? Uh, only closing thought that I would have is just to say thank you uh, for the involvement. Um, you know, kind of just comes together organically when I think that everyone can see we all get really excited about this. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and, and that, that component is just you know helping people uh, and. You know, it, we hit it off right away and, and you know, Sonari was already at the event and I was sadly late because I was doing another another event. Um, but, you know, it, it's uh, it's such an impactful like community. It's such an impactful program. It's such an impactful thing that that you're doing. It, and, and the summit, too, is just, you know, so, so great. So we just I want to say thank you for being a part of it. Absolutely. Thank you for having being on today. Sonari, did you want to say anything? Brian, looking forward to our partnership um, and the events on um, Sonari Terry can be reached on my 626-476-894. Thank you. Absolutely. And so thank you for being on part of another episode of the Black Wolf Experience. Uh, you can do this. You deserve this. We want to make it happen for you. Let us help you move into you know home ownership because it's so vitally important for you to do this. So you guys have a wonderful, awesome, incredible day today, and we'll look forward to talking to you on the next one. Well, thank you for tuning into our podcast today. It has been a fantastic opportunity for us to show you exactly what we're trying to do in the community, and that is to help people uh, to make sure that they have the ability to realize home ownership. And so my name is Brian Arnold. I am a lender. I'm with City First Financial. And so uh, if you have questions, uh, this is it. I'm not doing this podcast so that we can, you know, rush all the business over to City First Financial. I'm doing this podcast so that we can make sure that you are taken care of, that you have a real estate agent, that you have a loan officer, that you have a credit repair person, that you have an insurance person, uh, that you have a financial advisor, all working with you towards making uh, your home ownership realization happen. You know, we're also going to be talking about, you know, wealth generation and, and what it means to pass on to the next generation. I do, you know, I do trust and wills and making sure that the money that you've accumulated during your lifetime actually passes on uh, to the next generation without going through a thing called probate. And so uh, we want to make sure that we have some unique different things that we may have talked about on this thing that can help you think about what that's going to look like. So thank you again for, for communicating. Go ahead and subscribe uh, to these YouTube channels, we, you know, the, the, whether it's on YouTube that you're watching the video, or if you are list, just listening to this on a podcast, that you are subscribing to the podcast because we are going to have some amazing guests that are coming on and some amazing content. So thank you for the Black wealthexperience.org and getting on that and just coming in and, and listening to us and then taking advantage of the resources that we're hopefully and education that we're hopefully giving to you. So you have a wonderful, awesome, incredible Austrian day. You are God's greatest gift. And I want to make sure that you know that. Talk with you guys soon.